Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today has been described as India's most outstanding poet, certainly in the English language. He's won the uh, Commonwealth Poetry Award, the Sahatya Academy Award, more than nine volumes of poetry, three collections of short stories, novels, writings, and has read his work extensively uh, in India and around the world. I'm delighted to welcome Keki Darwala. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you have also had a distinguished uh, career in the Indian police service uh, as an operative was the word that I read for raw, but your sort of primary identity really, I suppose, is it's today certainly is that of a poet. Fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you ordinarily associate um, a different kind of sensibility with someone in the police or, or being a snoop. Is that a fair way of uh, describing what it takes to be uh, a, a, a policeman? You weren't a policeman in the conventional sense. You sort of moved beyond that into more sophisticated elements of uh, policing. This is the kind of question I'm normally asked, <laughs> being, in the, being in the position that I'm in. But I, uh, I don't think there's anything really, uh, there is no dichotomy between the two. Uh, people are bankers and they've become very famous poets. Insurance agents have become very famous poets. So I suppose policing is not a more boring job than be that of an insurance agent. So I don't find, I never found any dichotomy. Between I suppose it's just uh, a question of, uh, of perceptions of what makes uh, a police person. Well, we come to, 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 to that later because you're really yes. here uh, in, in, in your incarnation as a poet. Uh, you have produced such a large, extensive uh, volume of work covering a range of subjects, you know, traditionally, uh, you know, poets seem to in, you know, concentrate on, on being war poets or love poets or, or what have you. And it's, it's, it's given to very few poets to reach out to this huge canvas uh, of, of, of themes and subjects and approaches and styles. Um, what is it about being a poet that inspired you, that drove you? Uh, and, and I say this because even though there is uh, a great play with form, uh, you know, the fact of a huge range of content seems to suggest that you were at least equally driven by having something to say. I think more than uh, the poet, it's, it's the man which counts. And I am interested in a, in a large variety of subjects. So if you are interested, in, for example, when I get down to a short story or something, I have uh, particular fields of interest. Uh, for example, the, the Indian Mutiny, though I haven't written much, or at least not published much on that. But various subjects, uh, the Middle East uh, always inspires me, always, whether I'm doing political writing or otherwise. Uh, there it is, you know, the cradle of civilization. Uh, let's face it, the cradle of all the religions from Zoroastrianism to Christianity and Judaism and Islam. So uh, these are the Mediterranean, yes. Again, it's another uh, center of culture, you know. Well, you've also been described in, in, in some ways as, as, as a poet of landscapes as much as yes. you know, a poet of, of, of uh, philosophy and ideas. But I, I think that given the enormous passion that your poet poetry uh, represents, and I think that's always a, 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 um, a description of, of great poetry is that it must en encompass passion. So I'm, I'm not sure that when you say that you have a, a, a wide range of interests is a fair description. You have a wide range of passions. Would that be a fair way of putting it? Okay. I have no quarrel with that. <laughs> yes, I have no quarrel with that. <laughs> but you know, let's, move, let's move a step behind that. So what is it in, in, in Keki Darwala, the man, that, that, that feels passionate about so many things? I think that's a rather <laughs> difficult question to answer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Is it, uh, I, I'm trying to get to sort of, is it uh, a response to injustice? Is it to curiosity? Is it to, and yes. I get the sense that, you know, from, uh, that, that a great deal of, of yes. that passion emanates from that. 
Yes, especially mm -hmm. injustice. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you have injustice all, all around you, you know. Mm -hmm. I think especially in South Asia, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think this would be um, true of uh, a lot of other places in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, in South Asia, very much so. Mm -hmm. So uh, I do feel strongly about that. When you were asking about landscapes, you see, when I left college, mm -hmm. I hadn't been to the rural area at all. And the moment you came into the police and you started jeeping around mm -hmm. villages and you started really seeing how life was lived in the rural area, that, uh, that took me to landscape. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have said it earlier, a uh, riot town city for me is also landscape. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, people carrying a sick man on a plank to a Hakim or to a Ved, and I, I have poems on mm -hmm. such subjects. Mm -hmm. That is also that is also landscape. Mm -hmm. Those people, the two people, four people carrying a, a sick man to a, a Ved, mm -hmm. that they are a part of a, the landscape, mm -hmm. the part of life. So landscape and life uh, mm -hmm. blend into each other. That's mm -hmm. how I've looked at it always. That sort of juxtaposition between sort of the external landscape and the internal landscape. Huh, well, that has to be. <laughs> you know. I think also in terms of the, you know, the, the, the vastness of your work uh, is, is, is sort of uh, uh, the, the free movement almost between, uh, you know, working with rhyme and free verse. And of course, meter is something that is, is in a sense, common obviously to both. Um, what comes first, sort of, you know, uh, the feeling, the passion, uh, you know, words that then sort of articulate an unarticulated passion. What is that creative process? What, you know, how, how does it form? Mm. Not, nothing of the sort. The first, <laughs> the first lines. Don't destroy my you romanticism know. about the creative process. <laughs> no, no, of course, we'll of course, to, we'll there's a, the truth. of course, there's a, of course, there's an idea. Uh -huh. Be people, I don't want to romanticize it. Inspiration, this, that. Let's say you get an idea. After that, the the form that the poem takes is when the first few lines strike you. I, I'll, I'll give you an instance. Uh, I one year I spent in Oxford as a, uh, you know, member of. A, the, under the Colombo plan as a visiting professor. I, I mean, I am not an Oxonian, so I, I want to make that very clear. I studied in Ludhiana. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh -huh. face it, a very nice college. Uh, the government called it Ludhiana. But what I was trying to tell you is two lines haunted me. The double deckers hustled past to Kidlington and Cuttleslow. These are two villages. In one of them, Neera Chaudhary used to stay, and I went and met him there with my wife. Uh, that was a very interesting encounter, incidentally. And uh, those lines haunted me. Now, I still don't know whether uh, those two lines c came from a newspaper. I I'm not sure anymore, because this was about 25 years ago. And then the whole poem came. The first, I switched these lines to third and fourth. And uh, uh, an entire poem came through just mm -hmm. those two lines. Mm -hmm. So your rhythm, the form, whether you want to rhyme or you don't want to rhyme with me is dictated by the first few lines. You're watching a conversation with the poet Keki Darwala. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with uh, Keki Darwala. We're just talking about the, the creative process. So when this process is, is, is sort of underway and, and is that an agonizing time or are you is, is that a time of flow for you sometimes agonizing sometimes things come to you very fast mm -hmm. formally uh, let me be very frank formally whether I was writing a poem or a short story uh, I took a lot of time over it and you know one draft second draft uh, short story I wrote one in three months it would take me months you see uh, as uh, I progressed, uh, everything has become quicker and shorter. Mm -hmm. Possibly the computer has something to do mm -hmm. with it, you know, instead of the long hand and mm -hmm. uh, possibly, but I, I don't. I, and it also means that you are more practiced now mm -hmm. in your craft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you look at your uh, work, uh, how do you, do, you, do you respond to this after 
sort of immediately after and, and, and say a few days after or a few months after. You recently, um, and it's lying there on the table and, and mm. we'll have you read from it later, is uh, recently a, a, a collected works yes. of Keke Darwala has been published. Um, what happens when you leaf through the pages? Well, there's, uh, yeah, let me say it frankly, uh, when you get a book, especially a, you're, you're very happy to look at it. But I was talking about uh, after, you know, finishing a poem and when you go back to it two days later and uh, your elation immediately uh, Comes plummets, down to you earth. see, yeah, and you know, that's very, you know, fairly ordinary and uh, uh, actually when you go to sleep after finishing a poem, you, you're, you're on a high and sometimes you can't sleep for an hour and, you know. Uh, but uh, the next dawn brings you down to the uh, down to earth when you look at it again. Mm -hmm. But what happens several years later when you <laughs> see it as a collection? Apart from the sense of satisfaction that you know it's all there together, but when you leaf through it and and, and looking at it several years later, some of it you may have not read for a, for for a long while. Do you see these as my work or the works of a poet? No, you, you sometimes think of it uh, as the work of almost uh, another man. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I was a different person, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I suppose this happens with anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, a novelist who reads a novel which he wrote 25 years ago, uh, he's not the same man. And if he were to write the same thing this mm -hmm. time, it would be a totally changed uh, poem or novel or, or anything. I mean, if, you, if, if it's politics you're writing about, mm -hmm. uh, 20 years later, you, you would have written about it in a, a different manner, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's but it. now that it's sort of, uh, in a sense, more conclusively locked in for history, uh, yes. is there a, a temptation, a feeling that, well, maybe now, with 15 years of whatever experience, history, insight, let me change a few words, or at least add a comma or, or, or something. Which I do, uh, and which I did. <laughs> uh -huh. And I uh, excised uh, the poems which would have embarrassed me today. Mm -hmm. So I did that. Mm -hmm. And I suppose most people do it mm -hmm. if they have a collected, mm -hmm. mm, you know, mm -hmm. poetry or collected mm -hmm. short stories or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Even collected articles, mm -hmm. people come out with them. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be jarring notes here and there. You do away with them. Mm -hmm. What is the the the, the 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 function of poetry? Um, uh, there are all kinds of poetry. Why write poetry as opposed to well, not as opposed to anything? Why just write poetry uh, for the author? What what does it do? And we've talked about catharsis and release and ordering the universe. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a principle that would apply to many creative processes. Okay. What's unique and special? Why doesn't you choose to write poetry as a for me, short story? Yes. For me, music would be a very strong element. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, everyone can't be a flute player, player or a singer, uh, but the music should come out in your, mm -hmm. in your poetry, mm -hmm. which, uh, and uh, the music cannot come out in, mm -hmm. normally in prose. Mm -hmm. There's also the music of language. Mm -hmm. So even if it's free verse, mm -hmm. there is an internal rhythm mm -hmm. and language has its own its own music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is one. Mm -hmm. Number two, poetry is much more intense than mm -hmm. prose or anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, you encapsulate mm -hmm. uh, strong mm -hmm. emotion mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in short space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though I have been called uh, wordy mm -hmm. now and then. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So that is another element that mm -hmm. you are terse mm -hmm. and you encapsulate a thought or an idea in mm -hmm. half a page or in a page. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and you deal with contemporary reality mm -hmm. and uh, how it, uh, how you respond internally to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, in a more intense manner than you normally do in mm -hmm. prose. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm always surprised why people are not taking to poetry mm -hmm. or that much to poetry mm -hmm as they used to once upon a time. Mm -hmm. What is sort of uh, uh, the balance in, 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 in writing a poem between uh, conclusion and, and exploration? And by that I mean that, you know, a lot of painters will tell you that, you know, when you paint a painting, you don't know where you're headed. And, you know, you start with an intuition or something and then it, it evolves in your expression and your inner journey 
uh, sort of uh, runs concurrently with the with the painting, and, and it's also a process of discovery. Yes. Would that say that's a fair thing that happens when you write a poem? Yes, but I, for uh, when you when I was a novice, not that I'm uh, very practiced uh, uh, today, but uh, let's say my first three books or my first three volumes where I would consider myself a total novice. Uh, that was the time when I thought of the ending also, you know. Otherwise, if I didn't think of the end, uh, I used to write poems which got nowhere and then eventually they found a place in the dustbin. So I used to think of that. Mm -hmm. I don't do that any longer. Mm -hmm. Now I want to explore and you know, whichever way your pen takes you, mm -hmm. uh, that's how you write mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. later. You're, you're part of a, 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 a tradition and of which you're now held to be the preeminent poet of a whole range of people, Ramanujam, uh, Dom Mores, Zico. Uh, what was your engaging with them, their work? Uh, how much do you see yourself as, as, as part of a, a, a movement or a, or a collective in a, in a sense? You know, poets writing in English in India, Absolutely. and you know, without getting too much into this this whole issue of Indian writing in English, I mean that's that's been well, that's been debated to, 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 to death in a sense. But what was this, this sense of community, fraternity, and and, and now that you know, they've gone? A very uh, very nice question. Uh, I always consider myself a part of this Indian Indians writing uh, poetry in English, uh, a part of that tradition, though it's hardly a tradition, it's hardly 40 years old or 45 years old, uh, because we, um, the, the modern or the, now there's another term, the postmodern poets. Uh, we start from Nisim, literally, mm -hmm. his first book was published in 51 or so. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did engage with uh, Nisim Ezekiel quite a lot, and uh, it's a great loss, you know, not only his passing away, but earlier the fact that he you know, was no longer there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was a blow. Uh, I didn't live in Bombay where you have the strong English poetry uh, tradition, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, most of our poets mm -hmm. do come from Bombay. Mm -hmm. Even Kamala Das was in Bombay mm -hmm, when she mm -hmm. sort of shot up in mm -hmm. uh, esteem and, you know, came out with the first few books. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I did engage with Dom when he was here, and whenever I went to Bombay, mm -hmm. now and then I ran into him. Uh, so Ramanujan was living in Chicago, you couldn't, uh, but they were very, very fine poets, and you read them, so, and I used to be, at least for the first 15 or 20 years, in the wilds in UP, you know, Barabanki, Fatehgarh, Joshimat, mm -hmm. all sorts of places I have been posted to. Mm -hmm. So that way I didn't, my contact with other poets was not. Uh, so when you say engaged, what what was it? Just sort of talking mutual of appreciation, no, no. problems, talking about challenge. poetry, mm -hmm. uh, discussing mutual problems whenever you met them. Mm -hmm. Now and then, uh, the exchange of a letter, uh, and uh, coming in the same anthologies. So, what was the sense of the, the wh what was a common strand in the problems and challenges that you that all of you well, faced? Prob <laughs> the, the problems were publication. Firstly, uh -huh. you know the fact that there were no good or decent magazines, uh, poetry magazines in this country, uh, publishing books oh, I was, was another thing. I, I was hoping you'd talk sort of, uh, tell and us about the more metaphysical and No, no, no. <laughs> and, uh, and managing the Indian reality in uh, the English language. So that was, a, that was always a mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. N Nisim started writing in, mm -hmm. you know, Indian, Indian English, mm -hmm. if I may say so. Mm -hmm. uh, not very successfully, I thought. Mm -hmm. And the novelists have done a better job. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't think in poetry, mm -hmm. uh, in poetry you should normally write in textual English and not in Patua. We mm -hmm. don't have a Patua mm -hmm. the way the Caribbeans have or, you know, the others. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have it. Mm -hmm. Is that because uh, it, it's, it's important that, uh, that there is a, a, a f you know, for language to succeed, uh, there, is a, there is a consensus in a sense about what different words mean and evoke? Yes. Only then what the poet articulates or intends to articulate can I as a reader receive it if I'm, if I'm looking at the word more or less in, in similar ways. Yes. Is that a fair? Uh, I think that's a very 
Fair, fair statement. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching a conversation uh, with the poet KK Daruvala. We'll be right back on a short break. Don't go away. Welcome back to a continuing conversation with the poet KK Daruvala. What about some of the, 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 the newer, younger poets uh, who are writing and emerging? Uh, who do you sort of uh, celebrate, welcome, and in, in what ways do you think they're taking this writing forward? You see, we have, uh, we have quite a few young poets. I don't know whether to call them young. I mean, they are now in their 40s and uh, fairly established, you know. Mm -hmm. Jeet Thail is there. He has come out with a, a wonderful anthology of uh, Indian poetry in English, which is possibly mm -hmm. the best, Fulcrum. Mm -hmm. It's a magazine, and now I think Penguin are doing mm -hmm. a book on that. Uh, there is Ranjit Hoskote. Mm -hmm. And uh, more senior to those people, uh, Rukmini Bhayanayar is a very, very well-known poet. And she's also made a very big name in mm -hmm. linguistics, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a professor of linguistics. Mm -hmm. And there are, uh, there is a crop of younger, younger poets also so from Bombay mm -hmm. who are coming up. In, in what room. ways do you think they're taking you know, the, the beginnings of uh, what, what, what you and, and some no, of your no, generation no. They, 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 the, the way they play with language is totally unique. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. uh, poets of, if I may say so, of my generation. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they, they are taking poetry to a mm -hmm. different level. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the way they play with language, we never did mm -hmm. or never could. Let's, mm -hmm. let's face it. Mm -hmm. Well, in, 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 in the coming week, you have a, another publication. Yes. Tell uh, us about it. I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> so give us a preview, a curtain oh, raiser. The preview <laughs> would be we went through the Himalayas, starting from uh, Himachal Pradesh and going, to, going up to the Siachen Glacier, mm -hmm. the snout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we drove by car. Uh, drove mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. four cars mm -hmm. about 14 people mm -hmm. we had rallies with mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and we drove through the Himalayas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of people asked me oh is there a road you I said mm -hmm. no you each mm -hmm. time you come down to the foothills and then you go up again mm -hmm. but we drove through Garhwal, Kumau, mm -hmm. uh, Nepal, Bhutan, Sikkim right up to Kibitu which mm -hmm. faces the mm -hmm. Chinese you know the eastern most point of the Himalayas we went through Nagaland as well 78 days and we were in Calcutta where mm -hmm. we left mm -hmm. the cars and came back by train. Mm -hmm. So that was a glorious uh, journey. Uh, also because of the fellow feeling, uh, you know, mm -hmm. 13, mm -hmm. 14 people, most of them young, there were car rallies, mm -hmm. uh, quite a few. And uh, we went through to every monastery we could, mm -hmm. to quite a few temples. Um, so what is this book? Sanctuary. That, 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 that it's called uh, Riding the Himalayas with uh, photographs by Ashok Dilwali, and mm -hmm. you can't get a better photographer mm -hmm. for mountains. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's a he's a great one. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a sort of a semi a travelogue book. Uh -huh. Travelogue, and yes, it is uh -huh. a travelogue. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You've also done a sort of uh, uh, a, a, a set of poems on on mapping of yes. cartography. Wasn't that sort of an unusual <coughs> title? Mapping, uh, mapping. Uh, I, I, I wrote the map makers round about mm -hmm. the millennium, mm -hmm. and the millennium struck me as a moment in time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I, not consciously, mm -hmm. but one went into space mm -hmm. in 18th century, 17th mm -hmm. century. History mm -hmm. is a, a, another passion mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. and uh, how the first map makers looked. At looked at their maps mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. they were exploring mm -hmm. the world because mm -hmm. navigation mm -hmm. and uh, I mean mm -hmm. it's not just Vasco da Gama or Columbus mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the others you mm -hmm. know Bartolomeo mm -hmm. uh, exploring the world mm -hmm. you know and uh, missing somebody going trying to get into India and mm -hmm. uh, you know exploring mm -hmm. America mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Bartolomeo hit uh, Brazil mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, almost by accident or by chance. So all that uh, was in the mind. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, uh, the poems of the map maker mm -hmm. came through, mm -hmm. came through. Well, uh, y you know, the w w when you think of uh, famous poets, you know, if you think of Frost, you'll say Woods and 
you know, the woods are lonely, dark and deep, or Yeats, round and round in the widening guy. You know, with sort of different poets, you, you associate, you know, a few lines which become that much more memorable than, than, than others. Well, since you talked about maps, I'll read a poem on the map maker. Mm -hmm. Two poems, is uh, short ones, okay. sonnets. Perhaps I'll wake up on some alien shore in the shimmer of an aluminum dawn to find the sea talking to itself and rummaging among the lines I've drawn. Looking for something, a voyager perhaps, knelt as a thorn tree in whose loving hands these map lines of mine, somnambulant, will wake and pulse and turn to shoreline sand. The spyglass will alight on features I've forecast. Cape promontory, he'll feel he's been here, that voyaging unlocks the doorways of the past. And deep in the night, in the clarity of dream, the seafarer will garner his rewards, raking in his islands like pebbles from a stream. And I'll read the, the last one, because I went beyond map making. And uh, I'll, I'll read one. Forget markings, forget landfall and sea. Go easy, man, I tell myself, breathe. Gulls will mark the estuary for you. Bubbles will indicate where the swamps seethe. Map the wrinkles on the aging skin of love. Forget eastings, northings, they stand for order. Cry if you must over that locust line flayed open into a barbarized border. I was thinking of the Indo-Pak uh, border in those days. Mark a poem that hasn't broken forth. Map the undefined, the swamp within, the hedge between love and hate. Forget the coastal casuarina line. Reefs one can handle. It's lust that seeks out its quarry that one cannot map, nor that heaving salt of desire that floods the creeks. Geki Darubala, thank you very much. Thank this you. has been a great pleasure and a great honor and a, a great learning, sir. Thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>